Kaz Lopez is saying, is it and okay, I think that's uh, uh, guys. The reason why sometimes it's hard for me to read these because like you guys are not using proper. It is is it an un wait, is it un counterproductive? I'm just gonna not read the un part. Is it counterproductive of those Islamic countries to condemn and rallying against India internationally? Okay, let me read this one more time. Is it counterproductive for Islamic countries, for some Islamic, for the Islamic countries, for some Islamic countries to condemn and rally against India internationally? I mean, they have the diplomatic chest, the relationships. I'm going to say diplomatic relationships with India, and made leader Modi make compromises. I don't understand this question. But I don't think this will do anything in India of changing their minds on the minority rights, certainly Muslims. I just think they will see this selective outcry uh, paternalistic, which will only fuel the Hindutva agenda. Okay, so, okay, I understand the question. It's a good question, actually. Um, you're saying, what's the point? Why are the Islamic countries doing what they're doing against India? Uh, it's not going to help the Muslims because the Hindutva uh, crowd, they're actually, this is going to fuel them. They're not going to, um, it's not going to help the minorities in India. It's not going to help the minority Muslims in India um, because the behavior of this community is not going to change, okay? And this is just going to hurt their diplomatic relationships with India, okay? So that's actually a very good question. Um, I don't think the, the the Islamic countries, the governments who are doing this against India, I don't think it's because they care about the Muslims in India. I think this is just a virtue signal that they have to do with for their own community. Okay, so I think you're you're looking at this as like, why are they doing this? This is not going to help the Muslims. Why don't they do something? Uh, and this is going to hurt the relationships with India. I think that's what you're asking. Okay. Um, I just think like this is meant for a domestic audience rather than for, for India itself, right? So for, this is meant for the religious community within those countries, uh, they would not, given how big of an outcry this was, uh, as soon as the first Islamic country stepped up and like said, says that we condemn this right the religious muslims in other countries will be like why are our muslim leaders not saying anything like this right so they have to match it they have to like virtue signal to religious because a lot of these religious uh, a lot of these heads of state get authority get their leg religious legitimacy from the fact that they are speaking for muslims on behalf of muslims so they want to be able to send that virtual signal to the domestic audience that we're doing what we're supposed to do, right? Uh, or else they would be called out and, uh, in their hypocrisy if they don't, right? Um, I mean, think about exactly how much the, the BJP, for example, uh, decided to give in to their demands and call out these, uh, but it worked, right? So any, all the religious people in Islamic countries, they're like, oh my, look, Modi and the BJP, they bend the knee. So they enjoy that. They're like, look, our religious leaders, our leaders managed to do something. We hate Modi so much. We hate the BJP so much. And they had to submit to our will. Like, we have the power here. Like, you think you could bully Muslims in your country, but you have to be answerable to us. And we made you submit to us. Like, we will, hey, look, we will take care of our fellow brothers, uh, Muslim brothers and sisters if you mistreat them. So this was a huge win for the Muslims in these other countries because they, they make sure that they make it like you need our relationships, you need our money. And that's why a lot of Hindutva in India, they were angry. They were like, why did the BJP like apologize? Why did they bend the knee? Right. So they were very angry. And the fact that they're so angry with the BJP shows how important it is for the leaders to so it's competing there's there's international um pressure but there's domestic pressure right so these islamic countries they gave in to the to the domestic demands uh, over the international one 
and it paid. It, it they got their reward for it from the from the you know because the BJP uh, bend the knee and look the BJP decided to play the international game rather than the domestic one because they could have been like screw you guys this is how it is go get effed. Uh, but they decided to go play the international game and they like they apologize and they came out and say they were wrong um, and now they're paying the price domestically right so you have to choose which one is more important is the international relationship or the domestic legitimacy give but given that india is not a country okay so here's here's why the islamic countries feel free that they can push india around like this right because india is more rational than they are okay india is not going to than many of them like think about india versus iran iran iran's government has destroyed its economy over ideology like given that they have certain values and they're not willing to they, they're not willing to negotiate on those values and those ideals and the goals of what they have okay and uh, they have sacrificed international relationships and their own economy because they're so stubborn right and because you know their economy and they are paying iranian people are paying a heavy price for it india is a country that as much as, as ideological as the bgp is they're not as crazy okay they're not willing to sacrifice international relationships to that to that extent okay they like maybe internally they're more ideological than a lot of countries um and you know but internationally they haven't gone far as being as loony as these some uh, as a country like for example like iran right um so knowing that india will not values its international relationships more than some of these islamic countries like iran they know that maybe we could pressure them with the uh, with threatening their international relationships and it worked it worked um so accepting your partner as a rational actor when it comes to international relationships makes you able to push them a little bit more heavily do you understand what i'm saying asian american says if only muslim nations stood up to china in the same way I mean, I'm not saying that because I said that so many times when Susanna um, and I covered this news. So in the news segment, we covered this news and I just went so um, heavy, like so so aggressively against the Islamic countries because over this, because they haven't done anything this aggressive over China. Okay. But I'm not going to do that again because I have like said that. So, I said that so uh, a lot during that episode. Darka is saying, so they are playing the ultimate game of chicken with India. Well, I mean, yeah, the ultimate game of chicken, but knowing that India is not going to sacrifice its economy over something so petty, right? They're like, India is like, oh my God, I thought we were petty, but these people are extra petty. Like, like, like over this, like, sure, like, do we have to give them an apology just so that we could keep our relationships economically with them? Let's give them an apology. But again, um, we need to give that because that is important. The economy matters. International relationship matters. India recognizes that. Hindus, we're going to have domestically, some people are going to get angry. But, okay, we already know that these people are crazy anyways. Like, they know that these that is more important. So, like, the, the Hindutva people, figures in India who are angry with the government, they're angry because their government is acting like an adult, okay? It's putting economy and international relationships ahead of unimportant like ideological battles between like you know two, one individual on a tv a pk saying leaders in the middle east don't give a damn about muslims in india yeah i know that's what i said they don't give a damn this is just politics the problem with this particular case was that uh, Nupur uh, Sharma made remarks against the prophet. Yeah. So yeah, it's not about if. Yeah, I mean they even guys. You don't even have to think about CCP. Um, even Muslims in India, you could the so the same Muslim countries 
didn't say much about against India, India's government, when people, when Muslims in India were being attacked. It's the prophet who's attacked that they, that makes them angry, not Muslims. I mean, maybe sometimes they condemn the acts of uh, violent acts against Muslims, but not to this extent. They all got united over a comment, right? Like if you, if like if when the Muslim family is killed or like beaten up or like oppressed or discriminated against or if there's any act of violence, do you see this level of unity against Muslims? This is not at all about protecting Muslims. This is about pleasing your the crowd that we defended the prophet. Somebody saying this is not petty, Armin. It, it's just that two businessmen who back Modi have significant investments in the Middle East. Well, I'm saying they're not being petty. I'm saying this is over business. This is over relationships. I'm saying that they are. Um, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying India is not being petty. The other, the Muslim countries are. PK is saying the simple thing is that Indians are poor and need the Middle East the more they need they, they and need the Middle East more than they need us. That is not true. Okay, first of all, even if you're a rich country, this would matter. You don't want to sacrifice, you will, like, economy matters. Even if you're rich, you don't want to ruin, oh, we're rich, let's get poor now because we're, like, sacrificing our, <laughs> our relationships with our countries and our business ties with our countries, right? Um, yeah, so... And it's not true. Like India is a major economy. I don't. It, it, I don't know who needs more. more uh, who needs which sides more? But the other side um, needs India. India, like, but it's just that they're so. Their population is so ideological. More, I guess more ideological than the Hindu is, Okay, so India is like I, giving into these loons or the economy india shows the economy those countries are like giving into loons or the economy they're like giving into loons our loons are crazier than your loons so we have to give into our loons okay um but it, like i don't know exactly who needs it, it's not about like oh they need us more than we need them it doesn't matter you need them a lot India is a giant economy. You can't just sacrifice that. You can't just cut ties with India. You will suffer. But I guess they, yeah. Yeah, they are being pragmatic. Uh, Ibn Qiyam is saying, India is the bottom 20% of countries in the world for GDP per capita. GDP per capita. Okay, let me bring this. This is why you guys need to learn more economy, okay? What you what you should care about is G GDP, not GDP per capita. It doesn't matter how, when it comes to your weight, to your strength internationally as a country, it doesn't matter how poor your car people are. It matters how much money as a whole country you have. So your GDP matters, not your GDP per capita. This is why China, guys, China is an economic heavyweight. Even though their people are poor, Chinese people are poor, China economically is the second most powerful country because the GDP per capita of China is low, but the GDP is high, very high. So... India is a major, major country when it comes economically. Don't look at just, oh, look at all these slums. Look at all the poor people. Yeah, that's GDP per capita. The GDP is big because they have a lot of people. So they get to threaten people with their economy. They get to do that. They, like People want India as a market. People want to sell to India. People want to buy from India. It's, okay, what is the G rank, GDP ranking? GDP ranking India. You're looking at GDP per capita. Fifth! Fifth! Are you serious? India's economy? Yeah. Guys, it's number five from the top. You're looking at 20 from the bottom. You're saying it's a, it, at the bottom 20%. It's the fifth biggest economy from the top. 
only four countries above India. That's huge. You can't mess with that. You can't be like, oh, let's like let's get rid of India. Like, let's not sell to India. Okay. I guess you want to just trash your entire economy, just closing the fifth largest economy to your to your entire market. Okay, even Liam is saying, I never said India was not a heavyweight player in terms of total GDP. GDP. Okay, but that's the only thing that matters. Like you're highlighting the GDP per capita. Okay, GDP per capita matters when we're saying like, okay, what's the how are people doing? Okay, when it comes to international relationship, and we want to see who has the biggest punch. Okay, we look at GDP. Okay, so in the context of what we're speaking right now. It's not GDP per capita that you should pay attention to. In the context of what we're speaking right now, GDP, total GDP is what matters. Okay. Nanda is saying GDP per capita is very important. Yes, GDP per capita is the most important metric that you could look at. I didn't say it's not important. I said within the context of different countries working against each other or like as leverage as a way, like when, when your economy, your India is going against China, against Russia, like we're seeing like who, can, who has the highest leverage, who has the highest negotiating power. In that context, what you should be looking at is total GDP. I never said GDP per capita doesn't matter. GDP per capita, increasing GDP per capita as is the ultimate goal of all economic discussions. That's where everything leads to right now because we don't have better metrics, okay? So you could have better metrics. But right now, that is the ultimate goal, increasing per GDP per capita. Even the whole point of increasing GDP is to increase GDP per capita. That's what all, everything is about. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.